Ravens fans, I got to be honest, I absolutely love what Baltimore did in the 2022 NFL Draft. And throughout the weekend, we were pushing out all types of Ravens Draft videos. Today's show, UDFA signings. This is why you subscribe to the channel for the best Ravens coverage right here on the entire internet. You see the goal right to my right. We're trying to get to 5,000 subs. We're almost there. Hey, hit that red subscribe button down below for the best and most elite Ravens coverage. And with that, let's start today's show. It is the Ravens Rundown by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Chase Senior. Hope all of you are having a phenomenal weekend. I thought all throughout the weekend, the Ravens had a great, great draft. Kyle Hamilton, Tyler Linderbaum, all of the picks that they prioritized at positions of need all throughout all seven rounds, fantastic. But the moves didn't stop last night into Sunday because they have made some undrafted free agent signings. And a couple of notable names on this list. The most notable, Anthony Brown, and we'll talk about him at length. Ricky Person Jr., running back out of North Carolina State. Devin Williams, the wide receiver out of Oregon, who teamed up with Anthony Brown. Emeka Imizi, wide receiver out of NC State. So what do you see here? The players to my right, two from Oregon, two from NC State. What does that tell you? Baltimore had scouts really looking over some of these players, keeping eyes on them on their draft board and because they weren't selected that's why they were signed as UDFAs coming to Baltimore. Now let's focus in on Anthony Brown. After he transferred to Oregon last year from Boston College he had such an up and down Jekyll and Hyde season. The problem with Anthony Brown I like his athleticism. He is a decent collegiate starting quarterback. He is not consistent enough, and he suffered from some accuracy issues. He completed 64% of his passes, nearly 3,000 yards, 18 touchdowns, 7 picks. He can do some damage on the ground. And, of course, Baltimore prioritizes athletic quarterbacks because they run the scheme that they do because Lamar Jackson is the face of the franchise. He is the starter. Anthony Brown has to be a lot more consistent. There were the highs of beating Iowa State, or o Ohio State, excuse me, on the road early in the year. The Buckeyes, a phenomenal football team. There were the lows with how bad he played in a couple of losses against the Pac-12 champions in Utah. Focus now on Devin Williams. By the way, Anthony Brown, if he doesn't work out a quarterback, maybe a future slot receiver like a Greg Ward for the Philadelphia Eagles, who used to be the starting quarterback for the Houston Cougars. As for Devin Williams, wide receiver out of Oregon, he linked up with Anthony Brown quite often. 35 catches, 557 yards, and four touchdowns. The size here, really, really intriguing. 6'5", 210 pounds. The Ravens really need wide receivers to emerge here because that wide receiver depth chart, a little bit thin. Maybe Devin Williams could do that. The size, certainly tantalizing with some of those jump balls. Grade the Ravens roster following the NFL draft. In my opinion, they got better. They had one of the better drafts out there. I'd give them an A or B grade following the draft. Look, Linderbaum and Hamilton in the first round, that did it for me. They could have not made any other selections. Love those guys. I think they're pros for the next 7 to 10 years. Grade the Ravens roster after the draft, though. Scale it for me from 1 to 100. That's the pinned comment. If you get hit with that YouTube ad break, take advantage of it and get your votes in. More plays to get to on the UDFA tracker for Baltimore. Slade Bolden, Trevon Clark, Makai Polk, Aaron Johnson. And I like the combination here of taking chances on guys who – Played at really good schools like Alabama, California, Mississippi State. Then you go out to some of the smaller schools in South Dakota State to see if you can find one of those diamonds in the rough. Slade Bolden at Alabama, decent slot receiver, just suffered from way too many drops. The production wasn't crazy by any means, but maybe he could be a slot receiver down the road. Obviously, these UDFA signings, they're going to be on the outside looking in. 42 catches, 408 yards, three touchdowns from Bryce Young in 2021. As far as production goes, Makai Polk, he had it last year. He put it on tape. He put it on the stat sheet. The sample size and the workload here, very impressive with some decent quarterback play at Mississippi State, but really nothing special at the end of the day. 105 catches, more than 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns, the size component, again, something that I like that Baltimore is looking at here. We talked about that earlier. We're talking about it now. Big-bodied wide receivers, there aren't many of them throughout the NFL who have the skill set that Makai Polk does. He's just a little bit slow and a little bit thin at 195 pounds. Now, 
I've said this here on the Ravens rundown. That selection of Kyle Hamilton, great value, great player. Baltimore, a history of great safeties led by Ed Reed. You sign Marcus Williams. Now you have Kyle Hamilton to play beside him. That secondary is going to be elite. If you want to rock a Kyle Hamilton jersey or a jersey, merchandise available thanks to today's presenting sponsor in Fanatics. Just plug in that link at the bottom of your screen, chatsports.com slash Kyle Hamilton. Very easy, customized from us to you, and you can get that jersey or that jersey. Really good deals on both the purple jerseys as well as the white jerseys, black jerseys mixed in as well. We move forward on the UDFA tracker. For some of the players going to the Charm City, Rayshad Nichols, defensive lineman out of Stephen F. Austin, Jeremiah Moon, linebacker out of Florida. Charles Wiley, linebacker out of UTSA. UTSA had a couple of guys who ended up getting drafted. Sneakily, man, they've done some really good work with being able to develop that football program. I know their former head coach, Chugs, he was looked at as maybe fulfilling some bigger coaching roles and then signed a contract extension with UTSA. Jacoby McLean, a pretty solid linebacker out of Auburn. Want to hone in here on Jeremiah Moon in 2021, 49 tackles, two sacks. And the Ravens have a really good linebacking core. Going to be tough to crack that roster. He's a little bit older at 24 years old. Then Charles Wiley, that linebacker out of the aforementioned UTSA, 6'2 and an 8. 251 pounds, 36 tackles, three and a half sacks. Anytime you're going from UTSA to the pros and to the NFL level, that jump in competition certainly is going to be a big one for Charles Wiley. Among these UDFAs, you know, in a few months, we'll be like, man, how did this guy slip in the draft? How did this UDFA not get drafted? He got picked up off the scrap heap. He made the roster. He's making plays. So with that, I want to ask you this. Will any UDFAs make the roster this year in 2022? I'm talking 53-man roster, not practice squad. Let me know. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. couple more players to get to. Diego Fago, linebacker out of Navy. You go to linebacker. You play at Navy. You have to be very, very smart because you're setting up the entire defense. The intangibles here for Fago. Phenomenal, and he was granted the ability to pursue a professional football career. Sometimes you have to fulfill your service requirement. Diego Fago going to have an opportunity to crack the Ravens roster, and he doesn't have to travel far from the Naval Academy to Baltimore and play for the Ravens. Josh Ross, linebacker out of Michigan. Denzel Williams, cornerback out of Villanova, an FCS player there. Then Chris Moore, the safety out of Georgia State. Josh Ross here, linebacker from Michigan. He put up a lot of production, 106 total tackles for a Wolverines team that made it to the college football playoff for the first time under Jim Harbaugh. And then Chris Moore, the safety here out of Georgia State, a lot of people don't know about him, but he can bring the wood, 6'1", 210, some pretty solid size, can play like a heat-seeking missile, 70 tackles, two pass breakups, not the best player in coverage, but he does make up for it with a little bit of physicality. These players haven't been yet made official in terms of UDFA signings. Rumored to go to Baltimore, though. So keep an eye out for that. And we'll, of course, keep you up to date right here on the Ravens Rundown. For Darius Ham, offensive tackle out of Auburn. And then Trey Ford, the quarterback out of the football juggernaut, Waterloo. Yeah, Waterloo, baby. Let's go. I'm rooting for Trey Ford, man, to make some noise. Are you excited, Ravens fans, for next season? If you are, hit that thumbs up icon, like the video. Appreciate all of you for watching today's show. Let's get the 5,000 subs because producer Jeremy, he deserves it. He really, really does. And we all love him here at Chat Sports, just like we love you for watching the Ravens Rundown.